thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make house plant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just want to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. All right, today's video is basically about five house plants that I'm kind of totally over. That's as simple as I can put it. I've definitely had room in my heart for these plants. I've had love for them, but at the end of the day, after a long time of caring for them, I can't really recommend them to others, and I personally regret having them in my collection, even though I truly don't ever regret a plant, but whatever. <laughs> a lot of these come down to care or aesthetic things, so if you want to know what to look out for when it comes to these certain plants, then keep on watching and we're just gonna jump right into it. This plant that I am about to talk about, I've talked about before and it was on my overrated houseplants list and it kind of still stands. That is my string of hearts and this is a very popular common houseplant. So I'm sorry if you have one and you feel offended. I truly stand by this decision to be honest with you. I personally just find this extremely underwhelming. I think if you have a really full string of hearts, then yeah, maybe it can stand out. But for a lot of us regular folk with regular string of hearts, I think it just doesn't have as big of an impact as I really wanted it to. That's a personal aesthetic preference. I'm fully well aware of that. On top of that, on a more logistical note, these strings are so annoying. <laughs> I spent so long trying to untangle its vines and it's right back to being tangled. I have it on a little shelf where it kind of droops over the side and just the foot traffic and breeze that is produced around that area is enough to retangle the vines of this plant. I personally like it when they are divided and not just like this big tangled mess. On top of that, when you do try to detangle them, you're really putting yourself at risk for leaf loss. A lot of my vines have pretty big chunks of no foliage on them just from either a missed watering or trying to untangle the vines. See, we lost another, another soldier has fallen. All in all, the care and work that goes into this plant just does not outweigh what it brings to my collection. I think the string of pearls is honestly a much cooler, like distant version of this. I hope my plant people know what I'm trying to say with that. Next, we have another vining plant and that is my Neon Pothos. I don't have a huge gripe with this plant, if I'm being honest with you. The reason that this plant is on my list is because I have the Lemon Lime Vining Philodendron and I find those these two plants just to be so similar. It's not really worth me having both plants in my collection. I kind of just ended up having both. I do love them, I do. And they do have different leaf types. On the pothos, they are a little bit larger and less heart leaf shaped. Whereas on the lemon lime philodendron, the leaves are a bit smaller and thinner. These are more waxy. So there are differences. I'm not saying it's the same exact plant. However, the pothos I find to be a lot thirstier than the lemon lime version. I think if I would do a re, a re, a re, a do over. <laughs> if I were to do a do over, I would just stick to the lemon lime philodendron. Although I do think the neon pothos is a absolutely stunning plant, very easy to propagate and typically easy care. It is just a little bit thirstier than I want to handle. In my experience, the lemon lime philodendron is gonna be a little bit more flexible with you. Okay, next is a plant I don't talk about all that often on my channel anymore. And that is my Aglionema wishes. This is a very, at least where I live, common plant. I believe I got this one from a big box store like Lowe's or something like that back in the day for pretty cheap. I don't, I, it's hard because this is one of my oldest plants in my collection. So I do have a little bit of this nostalgic, sentimental feeling towards this Aglionema. However, I am not a big Aglionema person. I could live without this plant for sure and I wouldn't buy it again. My thing with the Aglionema is that they are not the easiest plants 
uh, they are not like as simple to me at least as a philodendron they take a little bit more getting used to unlike a lot of other plants your mistakes will be so evident on this plant i mean you can just see how bare the lower stems are these are all this was my learning curve and now she is this very windy naked bare plant and that is what i personally do not love about aglionema i really like plants that kind of grow with you and you can mess up with and they will bounce back have the potential to get full again whereas with the aglionema they are not super easy to propagate they get very leggy quickly if you know you're kind of not doing the best job it is clear that i have not had the easiest road with this aglionema and honestly i'm happy to have her in my collection i think that her leaves are absolutely beautiful this pink is super striking and unique but if she were to go i would not be itching to replace her by any means okay next i feel horrible putting this plant in this list because she is one that was given to me by a good implanter but i'm gonna always keep it real with you guys and we have to talk about the aloe plant that i have this very very sad aloe plant i have tried time and time again to take care of aloe i know they're supposed to be simple plants i understand the basic care of them needing pretty strong indirect light definitely not over watering them okay there's hair and vines on me and I'm freaked out. <laughs> so I understand the basics of this plant. However, I just can't get it right. It is one of those plants, I think we all have them, where we just don't get along. Our lives do not sync up. I've killed enough aloe to just feel pretty confident in the fact that this just will never work for us. But there she is. She's not totally dead or a complete goner, but I'll be honest, she's probably not gonna get much better with me taking care of her. I think they are great, beautiful, useful plants, and if they work for you, that's amazing. That is fantastic. But if you're not having a good time with your aloe, I'll just say you're not the only one. <laughs> Okay, last plant I want to talk about today is one that Instagram got me on and I just I, I just never fully went for it or fell in love and that is the Stephania sephirantha, I believe is how you say it and it is one of these classic little stump plants. Very similar to the uh, Stefania erecta that got super popular for a bit. I've even mispronounced or misspoke with this plant and called it a Stefania erecta when it is in fact a Stefania sephirantha. This plant freaks me out um, a lot. It's, it is super neglected. I have put it next to my cacti and succulents for some reason when it is a very different care situation. She has shriveled up significantly by the bulb the new growth shriveled a lot of the growth that she has put out why is my camera being so weird stop that is it better a lot of the growth she has put out is getting fried up and I have yet to get any normal leaves out of this baby. So it's not, it's my fault. I haven't put like my full attention, commitment, blood, sweat, and tears into this plant at all. I have not done enough research, research on her. I was so swooned by all of the Instagram and YouTube content I saw on bulb plants like this that I wanted to give it a go, and I was really excited when I got my hands on her. However, she ended up getting completely neglected. I have no words of wisdom at the end of the day on how to take care of this plant. This plant may work for some other people, but it doesn't work for me. I don't have the time to engage with a plant so different from all of my other house plants and I probably would not try it again anytime soon. So therefore, she is kind of regretful, regretfully a regret. 
is how I'll frame it. <laughs> so there you go. Those are five houseplants that I would not repurchase and kind of regret. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please let me know what houseplants you have regretted in your collection. We all have different houseplants for different reasons in those lists. This is just my personal experience and I would love to hear yours. Please subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed already and you wanna see more plenty content from me, like this video, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.